Well, um, and we're recording. Good. Okay, so tonight we're going to cover the, the love languages and human needs. Week three or four. So next week we're, we're just going to kind of summarize and go through how you can actually develop the skills that we've all been talking about with, with all this stuff. So we're, we'll talk about more of the functional stuff, actually putting it into place. So, um, of course, who in here has read the five love languages? Just so I know. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. In other words, raise your hand if you have not read the five love, really love languages. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I read the cliff notes on it. <laughs> okay. So the first of the five love languages is affirmation. Somebody tell me what is, what is affirmation? What does that mean? Attaboy. You're the best. Yeah. Attaboy. Thank you for, you fold my clothes so wonderfully. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing to come to you. Wow. What else? <laughs> well, well, Gee, what? Nice Give me some phrases that would be a little bit Gee. more emotionally intelligent. <laughs> I don't have any right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, affirmation is just anything. It's, it doesn't necessarily have to just be the words that you say. Affirmation is anything that you, any, any way that you use to indicate to another person that you appreciate. It's, it's not just even about love, I mean, it's, it's just that appreciation. That's, that's, gonna, that's gonna sound great on the recording. Um, the, yeah. You know, it's, uh, it can be telling, your, telling your, your, your boss or your employee that, you know, hey, you appreciate them. You, you make things better here. You, you know, you do a great job. It can be telling your spouse, you know, hey, I love the way you fold my underwear, you know, or, or you know, yes, things that are more functional than that. Than that. Yes. But it, it's just, it's any way, but it doesn't have to be verbal either. You know, it's, it's uh, an affirmation could also be on the same level, almost mixes in with like, you know, where flowers would be the gift aspect of it, the affirmation is the card that goes with it. You know, it's, it's what you put in there to, to, to put the words to it. So obviously words have a lot of, of pack behind them, but everything is a lot more uh, impactful when it's, when it's actually coming from you and coming, here's the emotional intelligence side, coming from a genuine place, you know, coming from a genuine heart. You can, how, how many times have, have you guys had somebody give you an affirmation when you know they were full of it? Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, you, you just know that that they're just like, oh, great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's totally insincere. And you can read that. And that's, uh, again, why this ties in so importantly with emotional intelligence, because you can't fool people. I mean, when, when you're looking at body language and the fact that body language is 90% of communication, you can tell when somebody's being real about an affirmation or not. You know, so... If, uh, you know, most people are really bad liars too. I mean, there's a few that are, that are really, really good liars, but there's very few people that are, that are good liars, especially the ones that have decent consciences. You know, I mean, it's, it's, if you got a decent conscience, it's, it's very difficult to lie. So, you know, when, when somebody looks at you and says, hey, you know, Amber, you look great tonight. You know, I love the way you did your hair. You know, and, and it's like, you know, people do that and, and you'll see their, their eyes dart around and, or, or they're like, uh, you know, somebody comes up to you and they says, they, 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 I'm like, I'm like, Jenna, you know, you, God, you look wonderful tonight. And she's like, thanks. You know, I mean, it's, or, you know, all those different visual cues that tell you that, you know, it's not realistic. So. The body language aspect of it is massive. Don't don't take this gift and be like, well, they're an affirmation person. Hey, Tiffany, like what you're doing today. You know, I mean, you, you've got to be make sure that you're going into affirmations genuine with it. You know, don't just make stuff up because that's what people want to hear. Again, you know, so uh, who in here knows that they're an affirmation person? Perfect. You guys have it? <laughs> okay, so what we'll do is we'll go through the five love languages, and then, and then once we've hit the five, we'll go around and you know, see what are your two primaries. So be thinking about this as, as we go through. Um, number two is quality time. So quality time, of course, would be 
Quality, well, let's cover what quality time is not. What is not quality time? Quality time is not sitting in the same room with each other. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> that, one, that one's always the easiest. What is not? So, so obviously, we, the, the cool part about this is you start to see what the love languages are. <laughs> um, I would imagine it's probably not sitting playing Xbox in the room next to the person either while they're watching TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it, it's, but it can go a level deeper than that too. How many, you know, how often have we done that or caught ourselves doing that? For instance, you know, those of us that have kids, where you have a routine where like, let's say you pray with your kids before bed or you read a book, but you're not really present when you're doing that. You know, it's like, it's like basically like, okay, let's read this book, come on, let's go. Let's, let's do quick. We fall into that all the time and forget to be present in mind. So, so the quality time thing, I mean, it's, it's very simple. People that want quality time, it's almost misleading because it's not about the amount of time. Let's take a perfect example. Doctor Talk, okay? They did a, they did a study where they, uh, where they went and they looked at doctors and they took, they took doctors that were very good at basically emotional intelligence that went into the room and just actively participated with the patient. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just really just, they sat there and they listened, they were intent, eye, eye contact, I mean, the whole thing, the whole time. And then they left the room. But they were only in the room for like one to two minutes, something like that. But it was one to two minutes of just focused time. And then they took another doctor, or a group of doctors or whatever it was, I don't remember how exactly they laid it out, but, but they brought them into the room and they spent like five to ten minutes with the, with the patient but they were like, you know, standing against the wall, looking at their notes the whole time, you know, looking at the, they never made eye contact. And they basically just, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, here you go, and uh, we'll, we'll see you next week. And so then they followed up with the patients. And here's where it gets cool, because they followed up with the patients later, and they asked them, how much time did the doctor spend with you? And this was, you know, a, a long enough time after the appointments that they had really forgotten exactly how much time it was. But almost unanimously, the people who were with Dr. A said that they spent about 10 minutes with the doctor, 10 to 15 minutes with the doctor. The people in group B thought that they only, that they only spent two to three minutes with the doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was completely backwards. And the point is, it's not about quality time, it's about present time consciousness. It's, it's that you don't have to spend a massive amount of time. It's like your date night doesn't have to be four hours or six hours. It's a, although I, we are keeping it that way, so I'm glad Jennifer's not here. Um, you know, so it doesn't have to be a, a certain amount of time. It's just, it, you can have a lot better date time in one hour. I mean, if, if any of us think back to a really good time that we spent with somebody, whether it was a date or, you know, or with a friend or something, you know, we can probably identify times where it was just that awesome experience. And I bet you, when you think about that, it was a short window of time. You know, I mean, I, I remember like when, when me and Jen were dating in high school, you know, sitting in the mall after hours, it was, it was closed. All the shops were closed and, you know, but the mall entrances was open and we had just, when the mall was closing, we sat down at a, at a little table there and we just got to, you know, and we just sat there and talked for like an hour and a half. I mean, everybody at the, I can't believe mall security didn't kick us out to find us. I don't know. But I mean, it's like, that was an awesome time. I mean, I, I totally remember it. She probably doesn't. <laughs> but, uh, but you see what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's all about the present time. It's all about how much time you're actively engaged with the person. So quality time people are not about just being in their presence. They're about being engaged. You've got to engage with them and they want the attention, not just the, not just the time. This is called present time consciousness or present time awareness. Okay. Or as a, uh, who was that guy? Eckhart Tolle would say, living in the now. Don't ever read that book. 
completely. Unless you like the in between the chapters thing where it's ding. <laughs> you know it's cheesy when that happens. Okay. Uh, so number three is gifts. Okay. Now, now with gifts, I mean that's that's simple and it's not. I mean, gift people are are ones that just like to get stuff. But again, are there not different levels of gifts? I mean, it's very easy to you know just send somebody to to get uh, a random gift or something, or go and get somebody a gift card. But name name the best gift you've ever gotten in your life. You're not a gift person. <laughs> Can you think of it? No. You're not a gift person. So somebody name the best gift you've ever gotten in your life. Camera. She's a gift person. Probably. Right? Right? Okay. That's what, so there's a story behind that with that out there. Yeah? Okay. Are you a gift person too? Oh yeah. Yeah? Okay. So so gift people will remember that stuff. But notice it's it's a camera. Why why a camera? What makes a camera so special? Um, I just wanted one that I could um you know, that would take really good pictures and I could spend time cropping and doing all that stuff and I spent a lot of time picking out the one that I wanted. And I bet you take pictures of uh, streets and rocks and trees and yeah. no, what do you take pictures of? People, family. So it's about connections, you know, and that usually that's what it comes down to is the gift allows them to express something else, you know? So the, the gift is usually about one of the connections that we're gonna talk about here later in the essential needs. It's about connection, it's about love, you know? So in your case, it'll, that's, that's one way to connect, you know, with the people that you love. So gifts are almost always the <laughs> best tied in with that. So, you know, a lot of people really, really like the gifts that like their kids make for them. You know, a, a mom just, you know, goes crazy over like a ornament that, you know, their kids made versus, you know, they went to the store and bought her, you know, six, six roses or something like that. You know, it's it, the stuff that, that they know that the time was put into, you know, even, even I, <clears throat> look at the way holiday shopping is done now. Uh, you know, think about the way that people do shopping now and what all that has kind of turned into. I, you know, back here at, uh, at Christmas time, I was walking through TJ Maxx and, um, you know, these, uh, it, we were up there looking, I think for a French press or something, just, just looking for something that we needed here at the house. And, and I see these people in the, in the aisles and they're just, they're just like, you know, they're just, I mean, they're just looking around. They're just looking for crap to buy basically, you know, so they're, they're looking just for random stuff to buy because it's like, well, I have to buy gifts. So let's just find a gift to buy. But how much impact do things like that usually make? I mean, we've probably all gotten a hundred or 200 gifts in our lifetime. And yet we couldn't think of very much. I mean, how many can we really, th I, I mean, I know I can't really think of a lot of gifts that I've ever gotten. One, one that comes to mind is a you know, it was a Lamborghini uh, remote control car when I was like eight years old. I remember that because it was really fast. <laughs> but, but that's about it. You know, it's so the gifts are always the, the people that are gifts. If you're targeting these kind of people, you always want to make sure that it's got some kind of a personal touch, a personal connection that you you really put effort into it. You know, if if let's say it's a, let's say it's a business contact that you're trying to get an account with them. You know, it would be calling and finding out from their office manager, what is their favorite type of food? You know, and they say, oh, well, it's, uh, you know, their favorite type of food is Thai. They, you know, he goes and gets Thai all the time. And it's like, great, what restaurant is his favorite? Oh, you know, Bangkok. Great, I'll tell you what, keep him in his office next Friday. I'm bringing in lunch. And you go and you bring him in Thai lunch. They're never going to forget that. It's like you put in time versus if you just were like, hey, can I bring you guys lunch? And you bring in something and they don't even like it. You know, they don't, you know, you bring them ham sandwiches and it's like, great, I'm Jewish. You know, <laughs> you, know, <you're, laughs> you know what I mean? It's, so you, you put your time, you put the effort into this stuff. All right. So everybody has gifts. Okay. Number four is acts of service. So uh, name, name some acts of service. Taking the trash out. Taking the trash out, okay. Doing the dishes. <laughs> Doing the dishes, all right. Yeah. Cooking supper. Cooking supper, okay. 
Okay, what else? What kind of things, people that are acts of service, how do you think they might respond to other people? By doing by doing stuff. You know, people that are acts of service generally because that's their love language, that's a language that they understand. They they they'll just be the people that rant that just want to do everything for you. Dr. Mike, can I please do that for you? Do you have any of those? April, constantly. Get, would you let me do something for you? Like, no, I'm not acts of service. <laughs> so uh yeah, I mean, it's it's all the random stuff. It's, you know, and, and another funny thing about acts of service people is they don't want to have to tell you. Okay, perfect timing there. They, they don't want to have to tell you, right? They want you to figure it out on, the, on, your, on your own, right? It's like, no, I'm not going to tell you something that you're not thinking of. I want you to think it's about it. It's an insult. If they got to give you the answer, they're insulted. Yeah. And he tells me, Shuri, I'm not a mind reader. You know, yeah. if you want something done, tell me. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's like, well, like, because it's all of a sudden it becomes, it's not an act of service anymore. It's an, it's an act of submission, you know, or, or something else. You know, but from his standpoint, which is also my standpoint, we were talking about this the other night. It's great that, you know, I, you know, uh, us too, you know, we seem to have a lot of these things in, in common. It's like, we're not that type of person. We're not actual service people. So we just don't think about it. You know, it's like, it's not like we go up to the trash can and, and we put it's something in there over. and it's 90% full. <laughs> If it's running over, I change it. Oh, not <laughs> Most of the time. It's not Unless I'm like, like you know, pushing you know, it. Yeah. 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 Hey, man, I did it every day with face paper. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> I give you grace, you know, and that, because I know it's not yours. But, like, how special or how cool it is that when I see something needs to be done and I haven't said anything and I then I check it again or I see it's done and I didn't have to say anything. Mm. Uh, that's just that's I'm totally at service so it's like that school to me. Right. And we you know, eventually we'll catch those cues. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Especially when you know, you know, what the what the person is looking for. Now if I had never trained in this stuff, if we never knew what any of this stuff was, probably, most likely I'd never catch on to that. Like or I would on a whim. But you know, it's, it's, it's all about, they, you know, they don't want to have to tell you. They want things just done. And so it, it can be, I mean, the actual service people can be difficult. I mean, all of these can be difficult. I think. It's, it's really just about identifying it. Yeah. I think it's like a level of thoughtfulness is required in all of them. Whether it's yeah. acts of service, thinking what they would want. Yes. Or gifts, making it personalized to them what they would want. Or just compliments that fit that person. Like it's. It's like, I guess, thoughtfulness is kind of like a running thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, again, it's all of this stuff is about, it's about personal communication. It's all about, it's, it's really, it's about really knowing that you're connecting with the person in their particular format. So, uh, okay, now, one of the other things, what was I just, what was I just gonna say? Um, It was, it was something, you know, obviously I know this one well because, because this has been, you know, one of, one of the things I had to figure out with her. Darn, I was just, I was just thinking of something. Maybe that's not your personality. You moved on to the next thing. Yeah. He's in rare I'm already off on the next. It'll, it, it, it may come to me. If not, I will. Okay, so the last one, number five, physical touch. Okay, so, so uh, this picture obviously shows the epitome of this because, you know, unfortunately most babies are physical touch at that age. It's dramatically important, but how often do you see this where, you know, the, nobody is in there touching them? I mean, you walk by one of these baby wards and there's just babies in there, dozens of them just screaming and shouting. When, when we had Jalen in the hospital, that was one of the biggest things. I'm like, I'm never going back in there again because 
we walk, you know, Jen was obviously still in the room, but I walk out and I walk down and I'm just looking in the nursery. Jalen never left our room, but I'm looking in the nursery and seeing, you know, this whole wall of babies, most of them with beta nine smeared all over their legs where they had already gotten the vaccinations, brand new babies already jabbed, and they're all just screaming. And here's these five doctors, you know, four or five doctors sitting at a little coffee table in the middle, just sitting there drinking their coffee and laughing and talking and everything. And it's just like all these babies are just over here screaming bloody murder. I mean, you can hear it through the thick glass. It's like Shamu's tank trying to keep everything <laughs> quiet. You know, got to make it peaceful. You know, so it's, it's, it's just you know, that, that's, Amen, the of mass. That, that's a, that's a side note, but Let it rip. <laughs> So the, uh, you know, on the physical touch, you know, these are, these are people that might now, this is obviously, I feel at least this is weighted a lot heavier with men. Would you not agree? Men definitely have a tendency towards being, towards being the physical touch component. And that goes into, which I'd like to touch on some next week is go through the biblical role of the male and the woman, what, what it actually says, the, the real you know, as your connecto, all that stuff, you know, on how, how we're really built. And it's not what most people are taught and what most people think. Um, a lot of the uh, wisdom that we, you know, hear all the time is, it's, it's, it's BS. Yeah. So the, the physical touch component, you know, is, is not contrary to popular belief. It's not just, you know, it's not just that. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 is not, that is not the only qualification. Not only. It has three letters. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and I'm, talking, I'm talking to the women here, okay? Because, because it's like, it doesn't always have to, and, and men too, you know? I mean, it goes both ways, but it's like, automatically our brains go to that. Well, that equals that. But it's not. You know, in fact... If you really step back and you look at it, again, the moments that you remember aren't necessarily that. You know, it's it's the it's the time when you were, you know, walking along the beach, you know, holding their hand. It was it was the time that, you know, uh, it was, you know, personal experience, you know, when we had lost our, our uh, three week old and one of our good friends and patients walked straight in the door, you know, full grown man, firefighter, electrician, you know, I mean you know, guy that loves UFC, all this stuff. I mean, hardcore guy. And he comes walking straight in the door and man, just boom, just wraps his arm right around me, starts crying on my shoulder. And I mean, it's, it's stuff like that. That's like, I mean, you never forget those moments because it's like, you can't fake that you that's genuine. It's, I mean, people can fake the other stuff, you know, <laughs> we can, we can walk straight through all that, all that. And you know, we, we, you know, you don't even think twice about it. You know, I mean, that, that kind of thing can just become a routine, but that's not. And I mean, seriously, how many, how many marital issues come out of that territory? Right. You know, because it's like, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> can you tell which one he is? <laughs> there has to be the connection there. You know, it's that, that is a, by all things, the two part process where it's like, you know, I mean, you, you don't even, I mean, this isn't one of those questions that you ask people. How many, of you have, how many of you have been in that situation where one is into it and the other one is, how well does that usually go? You know, it, yeah, you know, so it's like the physical touch component, it's not about the touch again, it's about the connection and it always goes along these same lines with every single one of these. It's about that active attention and the, and the intelligence to be in that moment and in that act, whatever it is, not just going through the motions. Nobody wants something that's going through the motions. Nobody wants, yeah, I mean, skip the holiday, you know, aspects and stuff if, or the, the birth, oh, the, the, you know, who in, do you guys know somebody that just has to have a card? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cards. Like that. Has to have a card. I have to mine it. Oh my goodness. And it's like, it's like if you, mean, like, you just can't call and say, yeah, no, no, the, the calling good enough. You got to have that card. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, it's like, you know, you don't want to just be going into those motions of just, well, I'm just going to buy gifts for everybody because I'm supposed to. You know, so so 15 people on the list, they all get a fruit basket this year. You know, it's, why? What's the point? If that's what, if that's the way we're going to go into it, just don't go into it. Mm-hmm. And here's the, here's the, I think the bigger part to it, if you don't have the desire enough to be in a relationship that matters with that person enough to want to fulfill their love language, then don't be in that relationship. You know what I mean? It's like, if, if I don't find that I can care enough to, you know, obviously this is pre-marriage, you know I mean? It's, it's post-marriage. You don't have a choice. Deal with it and live with it, you know, and you're going to have to find a way because you're, you're married now. There's no other option. Um, but you know what I mean? It's there, there, there is no, uh, there is no divorce and, and all this stuff, but pre-marriage, if you don't find yourself like, look, you know, Jeremy, your, your acts of service. Well, I'll, I'll talk about my wife because it's kind of weird talking about being married to you. Um, <laughs> So, so let's say my wife, you know, I know that she's acts of service and I've, you know, and I've identified that that's big to her, you know, and she says, you know, and she's like, you know, Hey, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. But I'm like, I find myself just not really caring and being argumentative about it. Like, like, well, I know, but I'm just not like that. That's just not me. You know, that's just not me. Well, look, if there's not enough intent to want to fulfill that, then that's probably not a very good relationship. You know what I mean? It's like there, there's something wrong with us inside that's not that that needs to be fixed, or that's always going to be a problem. You know what I mean? You know, so so we we've, we've got to look at all these things from that level of just being we 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 want to pick our 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 inside circle that we're going to pay attention to this stuff with. You know, outside of that you're not going to be able to fulfill everybody's love languages. And, you know, I mean, especially if you're a chiropractor, you don't want to, you don't want to speak to somebody's physical touch, love language. You know what I mean? And uh, legally, we can't speak to the gifts one either. So, <laughs> so 10 bucks, five times a year. That's all we can do. <laughs> okay, so looking at these things now, we got physical touch, we got acts of service, gifts, quality time, an affirmation. So let's just start here and walk our work our way around. What what are your two primaries? And we're gonna figure these things out. If you don't know, we're gonna figure them out so that you know for the sake of those who care about you, you can be like, okay, this is it. This is how you make me happy. So uh, if I say affirmation, is that just um, like like you said, like the body language? If I can just tell, like I like that from somebody. Um, it can be. Yeah, because body language is language. I mean, it, body language is communication, you know, so affirmation is really about positive communication versus negative communication. It's really tough for me because uh, I, I know physical tests got to be one, but the gifts thing, there's nothing like you get gifts all the time, but then when somebody that makes you something, mm-hmm. you know, that just like that like gets me. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I'm going to have to say... Uh, Affirmation and physical well, let's, let's just say affirmation and gifts right now. Affirmation and gifts? Okay. Um, so quality time isn't isn't much of an issue? It's tough. It's tough. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I do enjoy that too because it's like, I was thinking about studying the whole time. Like you can study something for four hours, but if you spend 30 minutes and like focused like right on it, that's mm-hmm. way better. So. Yeah. I, I don't know that. Think, think about this as we're going through this. Think about like the top three moments in your life that you remember. Like like your three favorite moments in your entire life. Seconds. Seconds. Seconds? Yeah, it's just a moment. It's a moment. Okay. But, but think about what, what was tied into that in relationship mm-hmm. to these five things. I think one of the chapters on the story too is like, if you had a good relationship with your parents, you'd be like, what was my favorite time with my dad? If your favorite time with your dad was fishing, it's probably quality time. If it was him telling you, you know, a great job on that home run, then it's probably words of affirmation. So you see, if it was him wrestling with you, it's probably physical touch. You know, so like, 
family or just or like, I don't know what I'm saying, like your favorite time that you can think of? I'm glad you said that too because a lot of these things you see are actually developed out of deficiency. I mean, a lot of our love languages, they're developed because, because those are things that we didn't get or didn't feel that we got at some point in our life. You know, so for instance, if your dad is one of these, uh, let, let's say that your dad is a, is a drunk. And, uh, and so he screamed at you all the time. He beat you around, you know, smacked you around, told you that you were worthless all the time and everything. How important do you think it's going to be later on in life when, when people tell you, hey, you're amazing, you're worth something and, and all that? How much do you think you're going to starve for that? You know, if, uh, if you lived in, uh, you know, if you lived in the ghetto and you never got a gift in your life, you know, your parents told you all the time, hey, you're wonderful and all this stuff, but you never really received a gift. What do you think is going to happen the first time a, a missionary pops up and hands you a bicycle? You know, I mean, it's like, you see how these things are actually developed out of deficiency a lot of the time. Not always, but I think as children, we're, with raising kids, we almost have to do all of them when they're children. To yeah, try to so, you're, so you don't starve them, them we'll in one area. Oh, no, it's real like that. I'm definitely going to have to go with... <laughs> Different angles. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, affirmation really and truly, I, I think about like you know my life and growing up and everything. And, uh, it was something I, I was blessed to always have. So uh, I'm gonna have to go with uh, with quality time and uh, physical touch. Quality time, and physical touch. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> You got a hard one. Like what's your uh, what's what's your favorite moment in your life? You can't remember anything before lunch, Doctor Mike. <laughs> 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 you need to detox. So was your lunch good? Uh <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Uh-oh>. skip. <laughs> well, we know it's not quality time because she can't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I think I'm a little bit of all of them, but That's there's not any say. that like. Like I appreciate affirmation. With touching me. I appreciate <laughs> quality time. I appreciate gifts. Like, but there's not one in particular I have to have. Maybe I just had a really good yeah. childhood. I'm sort of like you. That's good. Yeah. But I mean, like, I just I'm not one of those people that you have to get me a gift, and I'm not one of those people that you. Let's look at this way. When was the last time that you found your? And this could get awkward. When is the last time you found yourself really, really frustrated with the situation? Like with frustrated with a situation, frustrated with a person. Anytime I talk to my mom. Anytime you talk to your mom. Okay, what does your mom usually, you know, what does she usually make you frustrated about? Everything. Everything. Like it's hard to narrow it down to one thing. Could maybe. I think a lot of that, Tiffany, is that she hasn't realized that you're grown. I mean, I think yeah. that's one thing she like control hovers. Okay. So, how important do you or think like it would be? She uh, would how cool would that be if, if then all of a sudden she she recognized that and she treated you like an adult, and you know you were now a sister instead of a five year old daughter. Well, not a sister, a friend. Well, I mean, would that be important to you? Yeah. Okay. Because a lot of these things, again, are developed out of deficiency. Mm-hmm. You know, we may not recognize them, but, but you see that would actually work into affirmations. Because it's like, you know, wanting that affirmation that, look, I am this like, way, why won't you acknowledge I'm this? An adult and yeah. Care. Okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, you may not care how much time you spend with her. You know? Or think about, think about also, like, you know, who your best friend would be or, or, or boyfriend or whatever. How, you know, do you guys spend a lot of time together? Okay. How would, how would you take it if, uh, if like, let's say you took a job in an oil rig and you only got to come back one week every three months? That would suck. That would suck. Okay. So, so you would miss that quality time, right? You know, so the, uh, you know, do you do you care much about gifts? Not really. Not really. Does it matter with um, 
or, or could we have a different one as far as what we like to receive or what we like to do? I know I'm at your service, but like, I like to give gifts. That, there you go. How do you tend to make other people happy? I don't like to receive them. What do you usually do to make your, to make your friends and your family happy? That's another great way of looking at it. Because you're usually going to speak in your love language. So if I'm a gifts person, I'm going to be giving gifts to people all the time. Because that's just what I think you do when you love somebody. Not gifts. Um, I mean, it depends for like different people. Because my mom, I know she likes to service. Like, she likes it whenever you do something for her. Just to show that, you know, that you love her. Yeah. So that's good. And dad's kind of the same way. I don't know. It, it really depends, like, because I know, like, a lot of people, like, I know my parents like gifts. I mean, not gifts, but um, acts of service, but my brother definitely likes gifts. So it's, it's what they like. Yeah. I, you might agree with, and this is the good part about being, you know, knowing somebody for a long time. I would, I would personally think that you're high on the affirmation scale. You know, because I know, I mean, I've gotten to see the times that you're down and the times that you're up. And it usually comes down to what's going on with the people around you and what's happening in the situation around you and how that's making you feel. You know, and that's, that's, that's affirmation all the way. I would say um, quality time because just to use a situation that just happened, you know, when you and Crystal went running and all she did was complain. Uh, like she felt like she said, why don't I want to spend time with her? She's just going to complain all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, that, that's to me like you know, something that's... Uh, and maybe I'm wrong, but that, yeah, I can see that because, because I mean, you like to spend time with friends and socializing, and that's the like, um, outdoor personality that Here, extrovert. Here's another great way of looking at it. How do you find her most responsive? Like when when you when do you see that she feels the best about herself in your relationship? I say. Affirmation is a really big thing. It's always like, you know, hey, you look great today. Seriously. Like, you know, I'm like, hey, you know, really? I'm not I mean, <laughs> you're not just saying it this yeah, time. Yeah, like, I'm not running out of emotions, but like, I mean, like, I'm like saying, uh, you know, anytime something happens, I'm like, oh, I'm probably proud, you know, I'm trying to always, always try to make it clear. Yeah. I'm like, how, uh, yeah. I would, I would have to totally agree. Yeah. What about you? I really don't know, but um, <laughs> I think probably <laughs> acts of service and quality oh, time. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I, I can yeah. yeah, I can see that. And secondary? Quality time. I can see that. Can you guess? <laughs> quality acts time for sure. <laughs> quality time. I don't know about the other. <laughs> like I could go, eat, I could go with it. She's a little. It's. It depends on the hour. Of the I'm kind of leaning towards gifts, kinda. Yeah. In a <laughs> sense, because no, not because I like to get them, but because when I do, like if I get something like my camera was, I would say the best gift I ever had was my watch. Mm -hmm. It is a nice watch, but still. I, think, <laughs> I, I don't see. She's not a. She's not a gifts person. She's big, huge, high end quality time all the way. I said that. No other way around it. And then she's got a little bit of everything else. I mean, I haven't even that known you that long. But physical when touch. we went out to, when we were in Colorado, it's like up until the up until that point, like I mean, you were very, I mean, off like kind of dissing and everything and then it's like when we all went out that night and we had that you know time you know out mm -hmm. at the table like you know just hanging out and everything dude she turned into a totally different person it's crazy i mean that might have been the one too <laughs> but i don't totally different person you know yeah. and so yeah I, I can totally buy that she has to warm up 
I kind of think acts of service in a sense, not like I'm a doer, like I just do it, get it done, like, mm -hmm. but I'm not one that I don't want to tell you, like I'll tell you, do this or do that, so, but I'm on all, I'm all over the board, but all your time is definitely number one. Chase? I would say not from a, I like acts of service, I don't like Doing no, I guess I do. that's, that's what I do all day long, but I don't like show people that I love them by doing things for them. Well, yeah, I do, I guess. Um, man, I'm telling you, it's been a long day. You'd actually think that acts of service and physical touch people would do really well together. Yeah. But again, think, that, that, you know, that, that present time I think I'm, I think I'm physical touch and acts of service. That's where... Because I don't, I don't need any. I don't need anybody to say, "Oh, well, you've done such a great job to to feel good about myself or anything like that." So, I wouldn't. And I definitely don't care about anything, any gifts, none of that. You know, that doesn't really do anything for me. The best gift I do remember was a picture that my mom gave me after I shot the mountain lion, and that's the first gift that came to my mind was a picture that my mother gave me of me with the mountain lion up in Washington State. Mm. So I don't know what that I don't know what that means because it wasn't like a, a motorcycle or a four wheeler or a go kart or anything like that. It was like a picture of the of a mountain lion of an experience. Yeah, it was an experience. Of an experience. Yeah. And what and what's your primary? You said quality time or no 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 mm. <laughs> physical touch is physical yeah. touch okay. physical touch is okay. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Just people are usually more about thoughtfulness behind it than the monetary value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, I mean, everybody likes getting expensive stuff, but. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, one of the first Pandora watches ever made. Yeah. Yeah. That was nice. pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that was the thing. It wasn't what it was, it was his she thought didn't, press. She was, I had didn't like 20 know. Pandora beads and didn't even know that they even made watches. And I'm like, yeah. check this out. <laughs> yeah, so it wasn't about the gift, it was about the thought the, process yeah, behind it. Yeah, the intent. April? Um, gifts and acts of toast. As always, you're easy. <laughs> As always. Definitely physical touch for me. And the rest of them, I just kind of meandered through all of them. Yeah. Uh, mine's going to be acts of service followed by um, physical touch. Jennifer's is going to be quality time followed by physical touch. Acts of service and um, physical touch. I guess. <laughs> I feel like you're the guest the weight guy at the circus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need a hat. <laughs> Physical, Physical touch. touch yeah. uh, and hard quality time would be my second. Yeah. Jay? So service. And, um, I don't know, I'm not quite sure. Like quality time. Quality time. So, Where you're deficient at, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on you, Dr. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'd say, I mean, you're pretty high up on affirmation, too. She's, but affirmation. She's always sending cards and yeah. doing something like that. I mean, it's definitely acts of service. There's, there's no. It's kind of like you, you know, knowing, knowing that's the point. and that's where I am too. I mean, mine is, mine is physical touch, I think no I'm doubt. Kind of more rounded on all the other ones because. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I like what you said. We all like getting expensive stuff. The funny thing is, I, I was sitting there for a second, like, I think I might be gifts. I never care about gifts that other people give me though. It's all just stuff to buy for myself. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. <laughs> so, uh, okay. What's your secondary? Um, I, I mean, I don't know. That's, I really, I'm, I, you know, the, the quality time thing, I mean, I, mean, I guess I, yeah. I never really think about it. 
all that much. It's the affirmation. I. Yeah, you do. I'm like, you chiropractor. Good if you don't, we, we don't care about it. affirmation. We don't get it anyway. Yeah. You know, so it's like <laughs> we're 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 used to stonewalling that one. Um, I don't. I it probably would be gifts. I'd be pretty excited if you got me a Fiat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you say a Fiat? Maybe a Fiat, it's yeah. One of the little ones. Yeah, dude. Are you gonna get one? Oh, allowing man. Are you? Totally won't yeah. one. The one you're in there? Totally won't one. <laughs> yeah. But but the but the the Mag Daddy A bar, oh, yeah. 160 yeah. horsepower, 170 foot pound of torque, Alvin, zero to sixty in six point seven seconds. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Not be friends anymore. If you get a little I will whoop feet. your mini butt. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be dragging down Cylinder <laughs> Road. It'll look like Mario Kart. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cops just laugh. You know what yes. Yeah. Yeah. Be like. Um, yeah. Is that awesome. legal? I don't know. Are those cars? I think it's the, the me allowing you to the approval to get the gift. Yeah. You know, like yeah. your your whole. Your I would agree with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You were so excited about the box that came today. I love when we get stuff that I know that I didn't order because he's like. You <laughs> 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 needed a new receiver since you bought the last one. That's fine. I thought that. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What yeah, is that? that's that's okay. that would be a uh, that's a Denon receiver. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of like. I think I'm a gifts. Oh. I think I'm a gifts. Every box that's like, come in the past two I, weeks. I would have to say I'm gifts because I'm like it's Christmas. I want yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm like wall traction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or my Arthur Sim came in the night before last, and I was like taking pictures of it, and I like, used it for like, I used them for three years, but it was like it is. it's mine. It's like, mine now. Yeah. For like five minutes, he's pressing the button. I'm like Jason. He's like, I want the fan to come on. Like, Gotta test it out, man. Really. Jason, spend time with me, not your <laughs> Arthur Sim. <Stanley. laughs> exactly. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so pretty much we all know what our what our love languages are. Now, yeah, you know, the biggest thing there, pay attention to what your significant other was, you know, and start speaking to them in their language as much as possible. And the people that are around you. And the people that are around you. Yeah. Because I, mean, exactly. I know you know, you know, the ladies at the office, you know what theirs are, and mm-hmm. I hope that you try to please them and keep them happy too. Right. <laughs> April, you're, you, you said you're definitely big on affirmation. Yeah. As well. I said gifts, 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 and acts. Acts of service. Acts of service. <laughs> yeah. She, she, Man, you're always, you're big on affirmation too, though. I almost think when you it comes take affirmation to me, it's as a acts gift. of service. If I do something for her, it's yeah. So can like your cooking. love language be different depending on the people around you? I now see that makes sense though, because yeah. you, see, you have a different contractual relationship than we do. You know, it's like <laughs> she speaks to you. You're 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 contracted to her, but. You speak to me in acts of service, like like she won't let me do things I'm for like, her. Just let me help you. Oh just man, if I that. if I try to do oh, something that's hers, that. you know that's like disgraceful. <clears throat> that's you know, so. When we first got married, um, Christy was little, and um, I you know I cleaned the house, I done the laundry. The house was spotless. I mean spotless. Oh, just and he said. He made some comment about um, you don't love me or something, and I'm like, just spent the whole day. That's for you. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I mean, that's that's just. It would be awesome if this was like in <clears throat> pre-marriage teaching and stuff mm. like that, because I mean, you you're just not taught that. I mean, or I wasn't. Mm. And I, when we went through this class, it was like, oh my gosh, it just made so much sense when we first heard about this book and it was introduced in our couple's ministry or whatever. But I mean, it just makes so much sense. It's funny, uh, while, while you were talking, I just connected the dots that you, you, the times that you get most excited about affirmation is based on the job that you're doing or have done. So it goes back to access service. Yeah. See how they cross the lines there? Okay, so good stuff there. Now we're going to go through the six fundamental human needs. And this this stuff is really cool because it shows you these, while, while the love languages are different for every person, the fundamental needs of humans, these are 
These are capstone absolutes with every single person. No matter how you, who you are, what you look at, you absolutely have to have these components in your life, okay? And there, there's constructive ways to do it and there's destructive ways to do it. So we'll, we'll touch on those as, as we go. So the first one is certainty and comfort, okay? Every single person has to have a level of certainty and comfort. So- You mean security? Uh, is security certain? is in there too. It's, okay. it's not so much security, it's, it's certainty like, I mean, you're, that certainty can be like, you know who you are. How many people are miserable and depressed because they don't know who they are? You know, they're, they're like, they're not certain about what they're doing. You know, they might be, they might be driving a school bus, but they feel like, or, you know, they might be a, a accountant's assistant and they feel like that's not what they should be doing. You know, so it's, it's this uncertainty there that, that they're not fulfilling whatever purpose they have for themselves. You know, so we have to have this absolute certainty that, uh, for instance, in, in marriage, you know, how many problems develop in marriage because we get that little bit of uncertainty in there that, uh, that you know, they, they just, well, what if, you know, or maybe if they don't, you know, or I mean, when you're dating and you start getting that, that, well, you know, I don't know, can I really be certain about that, about that person? And, you know, and all that kind of stuff that goes along with it, we just, we have to know, you think about the most stable places in your life. Think about the most stable place in your life. How certain is that? You know what I mean? It's like maybe you've got a wonderful relationship with your parents. And where that will usually come from, if you look at it, you are absolutely certain that, they're, that they are never going to back down on you. That you, they are absolutely trustworthy 100%. You will never lose them in that relationship, right? You know, these are people you could absolutely mess completely up on everything and, and they're still going to be right by your side. You know, so we have to have that. So now think about that. Um, let, let's think about the flip side of that. Okay. A lot of people, um, they put certainty in, let, let's say somebody that puts it in monetary value. How many times have you heard the story of, uh, especially in the last couple of years, about you know guys that were real estate or stockbrokers or something like that and had millions of dollars and then they lost it in Wall Street? What did they do? Kill themselves. Because where was their certainty? In their, their, in their pocketbooks. And so when that disappeared, all of a sudden, all their certainty, their whole world fell apart. It crashed down because their certainty lied right there. They didn't have it in their relationships. They didn't have it in, well, I'm absolutely certain that my faith is in God and everything's gonna be fine. You see, even that is not, it's, it's not even so much, I mean, somebody could have faith, let, let's just say for a second, and I mean, this might offend some people, but faith in a God that doesn't exist. You know, let's say that there's, that they believe in, you know, I believe in, uh, you know, the, you know, the God, uh, Nosferiti, I don't know, you know, just some, some God that doesn't exist that you completely made up in your head, but you're absolutely certain that that God is there and he's got you, you know, un, and he's got you protected. Well, that's just like then, hope, right? Like as long as yeah, you've got hope, exactly. you can't, you won't stop because you've got you're hope. Exactly, God. exactly. You know, so it's just that certainty that makes everything work out in that sense. You know what I mean? It's the same like, you know, at the end of the day, you don't have to worry about, I don't have to worry about if I go home, if he's coming home that night. I know he's coming home because of the relationship that we have. What would happen if he did it? I would know something's wrong. Yeah, I mean, it's like all of a sudden you go into panic mode because, you know, oh my goodness, you know what's going to happen now? What happens if... You know, you uh, you all of a sudden one somebody that you really care about. You know, they start all of a sudden they collapse on the floor and start having a seizure. All of a sudden, you're freaking out because it's like you know you thought you had stability there. You know, and it's essentially the 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 looking for stability is looking for those places that you know you don't have to worry about. It's like having everything under control. It's like, okay, that piece of my life is there, that piece is there, that piece is there. And then when that piece moves, all of a sudden it's like, oh, you know, we get real nervous because that certainty isn't there anymore. 
You know, so we, we absolutely have to have that certainty. And you, you think about the best parts in your life, usually it comes down to it's, it's, it's where the certain, certainty areas lie, where, where the comfort is. Okay? Number two, uncertainty. We actually have to have a level of uncertainty. Okay, so constructively, that would be like, um, you know, that would be, think about going out on dates with your, with your spouse, you know, and you have the, you know, it's absolutely certain in your schedule that you're going to go out on a date on the first of every month. And you're going to go to dinner at this restaurant, then you're going to go to the movie after that, and then you're going to go and get coffee at Starbucks after that. What happens after a while? Bored. Really bored. You know, so, but what, ha- what, what would happen if all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're at work and your husband comes and picks you up at work and says, hey, come on, get in the car, we're going to the airport. You know, and, and it's like, I mean, how exciting would that kind of thing be? Because all of a sudden it's like, ooh, variety, mm-hmm. you know, spice. So that's the constructive part of this. The destructive part of this I don't think I can put it in any clearer terms. One of the uh, you know, one of the the places that you see this most destructively filled is that classic example where, like the uh, you know the uh, and I'm not picking on women here by any means. This is just one example, but you see the thought process here. You know, the wife whose husband works makes tons of money. You know, uh, they got everything made. Their whole life is stable. Everything is very much in place. They know exactly what their schedule is. Da 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 da. And and they're they're just bored. And then what happens? They end up having an affair with the pool boy. You know, it's affairs almost always come down to their missing uncertainty in their life. So they're looking for something to create uncertainty and shake it up. And that's a very destructive way to put it, you know, to, to, to fulfill that need. But that's almost always what it comes down to. It's, it's looking for that uncertainty. In some cases, it can be different. It can be, you know, that, that their relationship is so screwed up that they go looking for certainty somewhere else. Does that make sense? You know, so it's this, it's this balance between certainty and uncertainty that we all need. You know, and, and it's all about having that wave there. When it goes too far in one direction or the other, all of a sudden things get messy, you know. And, and, and think about, um, you know, as we're, as we're going through these, what I want you to, to be thinking about is when were the best moments in my life and then when were the most disastrous, the most painful points in my life? You know, some of the, you know, maybe some of the, the really bad mistakes that we've made. And you'll see that almost every, well, not almost, every single one of even the mistakes that we've made come down to us in some way trying to fulfill one of these needs. Even though we didn't sense it, we didn't know it at the time, we were actually trying to fulfill one of these that wasn't being met in some way, or we didn't, we maybe didn't perceive that it was, was being met, right? Okay, number three, significance. Okay, again, everybody wants to be significant. You know, they want to be, you know, uh, it's easy with, with women. You know, women want to be significant. They want to know that, you know, they've, and it's because that's built into us. We're going to talk more about that next week, the, the idea of, of how the woman was built. But they're built to, you know, to, to be the one that, that fills, you know, to, to complete a man, you know, so if they're not doing their biblical role of filling, you know, I, I don't even want to say biblical, the, the God designed role of fulfilling that man or, or a man, then, then there's a level of inborn insignificance there because, because it's just that that simple role has not been met. You guys, you guys see that? Does that make sense? Am I... Am I, am I being clear there? You know, I, I you know, d- d- with, with you, I don't want to point you out, but, but <laughs> no, I, you, I mean, you understand what I mean? Like, like it's, I don't, I've never met too many 
women that aren't married and don't have some kind of a hole there. Like, like it's like, I, you know, I want to, to, uh, you know, and I, I had a relationship coming up. I'm not going to say not, not, uh, not a, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend relationship, but somebody close to me who this was so apparent with, it was nauseating. I mean, it was like, it was like from one to the next, to the next, to the next. And it was just so you're saying that they can't, had to have significance, significance unless, unless they, they were attached to a guy, I see. Okay. you know, it's, it's like, that was to the absolute extreme. And, and again, we probably all know people like that, you know, it's like, you know, just had to be attached. But we can find significance in all different kinds of ways. You know, how many, uh, you know, how many doctors or lawyers or, or really of any profession feel insignificant because they're not, because they're not at a certain level. They're not doing what, what their peers do. I mean, in any job, it doesn't matter what it is. You know, if you're a salesman and you work at the Chevy dealer and all the other, all the other guys are selling X number of cars and you sold one in the last six months, you're going to feel insignificant because you're not making an impact. So what, what are some now destructive ways that some, that people might find significance? Well, they they can get too full of themselves. You know, they can, they can think that they're better than everybody else on the planet. Mm -hmm. yep. or better than all their peers it can turn into arrogance and cockiness and so so that's from the level when they have too much mm -hmm. significance what if they have too little significance actually this is kind of a random example but I see this in my job all the time because I'm written to cars to businessmen that come in it's funny like the really high level businessmen typically like your CEOs the very the, the more prestigious jobs if something doesn't go right, they're very they're very easy going as a general rule. But it's like the businessmen that are that aren't there yet, they're far more likely to be the ones to lose their temper, you know, speak abusively to you or do that kind of thing. And I thought I thought about it too, it's like the people that have already achieved, they don't have anything to prove. Yeah. But then maybe I think it goes back to this, someone that's looking to create significance or they they really desire to be seen as significant, they're far more likely to do, like treat you bad or to like try to demand respect just to either verbal abuse or yep. or just big talk, things yep. like that. Absolutely, and that's exactly where I was going with it was was the bully. You know, the bully is almost always the one that has insignificance in his life. It's I mean it's almost always the kid who didn't have attention from his dad or, or is talked to, you know, ab abusively by his parents or, or even was beat up all the time by his older brothers, you know, or hers or whatever. And, uh, and, or that can even go so far as into the criminal mindset, you know, where, you know, criminals will, uh, you know, I mean, when it comes to, to murder and rape and you know and all that they stuff they want to they want yeah. people to know who they are yeah it's like you know they, they they can't find significance in any meaningful relationship so they're just like well I'm just going to go and take it instead you know and, and that and and that brings them significance like you know? yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's it, it's yeah that's when people remember his name huh like he was like the and the big guy has one people to remember his name, so that's why he fought all these wars. He didn't have to fight in the wars, but he just wanted to be famous. So. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of people do some some wild things to be significant. I mean, you, you look at, uh, you know, you look at a lot of the, the, the great rulers of the planet, you know, Alexander the Great and uh, Genghis Khan and all these guys. I mean, they were like... Uh, what, what did Genghis Khan say? Something like, you know, I'm doing God a favor because uh, he wouldn't he wouldn't send me to kill you unless he wanted me to, or something like that. You know, it's these these people like that. They're they're out to conquer because it just it keeps on giving them. They have this endless quenching un unquenching thirst to be significant. So that's a big one. Uh, number four, connection and love. I. I the, the, I mean, just I, when, I, when I thought of connection and love, nothing struck more to me than, than how Facebook has exploded. You know, I mean, there, there, is, there is no clearer example of, of how much we thirst for connection and love than how Facebook has done over the last, 
because what happens? I mean, if you, if you think about it, most of the people that you connect to on Facebook, would you have ever cared to have a conversation with them or to seek them out if it weren't for Facebook? I mean, really. You know, I mean, I've, I've got, what, a dozen, 1,400 friends or something like that on Facebook. If I never heard from 1,350 of them, I probably would never even think about it. You know, it's, it's, it's not, it just, it just wouldn't be a big deal. You know, they're, they're not people that, so we're not really, you know, we're going about this in almost a wrong way. We're not really about being connected all over the place. It's about having strong connections that matters. You know, you can have, you can have connections, you know, with, with all these people on Facebook and everything and yet, yet not have any real friends, you know, and so you're still not really fulfilled, even though you're, you're Facebook famous, you know, <laughs> is that, is that, is that a uh, tag yet? Can, can I, Facebook yeah, you need I just, I just coined that term that. right here. <laughs> yeah. Facebook famous. No, um, so many people, so many people that use Facebook and that's like, that's their friends. That's their life is Facebook. Yeah. They don't live in life. Right. I mean, they tell everything they do. I don't care if you're at Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> and chances are, if you say that in your online, you're off. And there's only about 20 online anyway. <laughs> and the, most of our family, and I don't really care, honestly. The ultimate the example of this is when people post on Facebook upset or frustrated or something like that. Because what is it telling you? They're putting one word on there because they want somebody to wise. care. Why? Yeah. They want somebody to be like, really? Why? We were just talking oh, about this my this goodness. morning. We've got, well, I've got this, these friends that are couples. They're both on my Facebook and they've had issues forever. And she posts like literally what happened she's on gonna, Facebook. If and someone I'm comes like, after her husband, she's going to beat them to death. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, really? Like you put this on Facebook for everyone to see. You're My asking. husband's married to a bottle of liquor. <laughs> 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 He'd rather have his bottle of beer than me. And oh god. I was like, wow. I mean, literally, first thing this morning. She definitely needs seven, some love. This morning, she's missing some quality time. Yeah, <laughs> I would say that. <laughs> definitely quality time. Oh my goodness. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's amazing because we, we have to have connection and love. We have to have that, 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 I mean, really we're here. The reason we're here is all about connection. I mean, if, if, and I mean, let's just take that on a spiritual level for a second. It's like, if, if you're, you know, we, we put so much emphasis on you know when when you go into to most churches and everything there's so much emphasis on on you know where we're going to go you know on the idea of salvation and that I'm going to go somewhere but think about it if that was the most important thing that God had for us if that was the big thing that he was concerned with then what do you think my you know what 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 would be the ultimate outcome if that's what he was concerned with why wouldn't it be, well, we made the decision and all of a sudden, poof, we're just, we're just gone. We got our ticket right there. He wanted the relationship with us. Yeah, it's, it's all about, but it's not all, only that. It's, it's you know, he, uh, even, even if you look at Jesus' ministry, he made deep, lasting relationships with how many people? Twelve. Very small group of people. And then what did he tell them to do? Now you go out and you disciple others mm -hmm. because it was all about branching out like the roots of a tree. We're all about connection. It's not just about the, it's not just, you know, about the ticket to heaven. It's our primary job. And if you look at the, I mean, really, if you even look at scripture, there's very little that even talks about the salvation issue. I mean, there's, there's ultimately the, the picture that points to that. But we tend to look at that and be like, well, that's what we really need to be looking for is, you know, we just need to, that's all we got to focus on. And we're myopic to that. But we're forgetting the fact that the book is that thick. 
You know, and that the majority of it is about what we're doing right here, right now, because that's what actually matters to him or he wouldn't spend that much time with it. You know what I mean? So it's ultimately, it's all about connection and love. It's all about making the connection with people and loving life so much here that it's like, uh, what it wasn't it Paul that said, you know, that I long to be with my father in heaven, but I know my burden is here. I know that I, you know, I, I have a, in other words, I have a need to be here because, because I see what needs to be done out there in, in, in the people, you know, and that's, that's huge. I mean, it's like, you know, our, imagine as a doctor, you know, if our ultimate goal was just, was just to, uh, you know, make a lot of money and retire as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. It's you pretty know? miserable. That's, yeah, most docs that live like that, they're miserable. I mean, they can, they can be raking it in and they're absolutely miserable and they don't know why. No matter how much stuff they buy and no matter how big their house is and everything, they're still miserable. You know, and ultimately it all comes down to we're not fulfilling this need to connect with people. So, uh, you know, the, the destructive side of this is when people try to turn it off, you know, and they're like, well, I don't need to connect to people. That, that's where the real destruction comes in, you know, because they start cutting off relationships around them and then they find themselves completely disconnected and then, and then they end up connecting in the wrong ways. You know, they end up, uh, I mean, all kinds of different scenarios going there. You, you know, use your imagination. Number five, growth. Jim Rohn said that, uh, you know, he actually said this in front of a group of psychiatrists and psychologists at a convention. He said, I think I know what makes, what makes a man, what drives a man crazy. Of course, you know, that's not what you say in front of a group of psychologists and psychiatrists. That's their entire job. It's kind of like, you know, a, a, a motivational speaker saying in front of a group of chiropractors and saying, I think I know what caused subluxation. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, mm-hmm. you know, but, but he's, I mean, it makes a ton of sense. He said, it's not being what you're designed to be. It's not, it's not fulfilling what you know you can. It's not doing all that you can. It's not being all that you are. That's what drives people crazy because we have this underlying need for constant never ending growth. We have to have it. If you're not growing, what do you feel? Stuck. And nobody wants to be stuck. So it's always that new challenge, that new level. You know, you you hear it even like, you know, people like Warren Buffett. I mean, think about that. Have you ever thought about that? You know, Warren Buffett and all the money that he has, Bill Gates and all the money that he has. I mean, you ever just sit back and be like, well, why don't people that have that kind of money, I mean, they could make such an impact if they just put, you know, why don't they put, you know, a billion dollars into, you know, providing water for all the people in Africa mm-hmm. or something like that. You know, why don't they do this stuff? Or find and, a cure for cancer or right. You know, like it's like, why? I mean, the people that have the resources, why don't they use it? And it's because of this need for nonstop growth. You know, people will literally kill themselves continuously growing and growing and growing and growing and working and working and it will net that that's a point it will never be fulfilled if it's something materially where you really want growth is is working towards legacy that's where you want growth that's mm-hmm. where it's that's where it can you know it can actually be satisfied you know it is by by knowing looking back at your life you may not have a lot of money you may not have done a lot of things but you look back and you know and all of a sudden 300, 400, 500 people show up at your funeral, it's like, that's a person that grew. You know, you may have another guy who has $100 million in the bank, and the only people that show up at his funeral are his doctor, who he owes a bill to, his lawyer, who's seeing who's there to split it with, and his, you know, and, and the, the tax attorneys, you know, looking to see how much they can take out of it. You know, it's, that's, that's not really... A, a productive level of growth. But we've got to have that growth. If, if people feel like they have no room for growth, what do they typically turn to? Either nuts or what happens when people feel, for instance, that they have no opportunity for economic advancement? Crime. Crime. 
They go, they'll go rob a bank. They'll go and steal from people. They'll go and they'll turn to these other ways to grow because they feel like there is no opportunity for growth in the, in the economic sense there. You know, when do we see the really inspirational stories? We see the stories like the, what, what was the movie with uh, Will Smith where he, you know, had like nothing. He was a Pursuit broke of down happiness. pursuit of happiness, you know, and, and we see this story and, and I mean, really honestly, it's like, if you step back and think about it, do you really care that, you know, some guy that you don't know made a, you know, went from selling this to, to getting a job somewhere? It's like, I mean, think about a real person, you don't care. The reason why stories like that connect with us is because we see the growth that happened there and we aspire to do that ourselves. It's a fundamental need. Number six, contribution. We have to contribute. You know, and this kind of goes with growth, but but it doesn't at the same time because you can grow and grow and grow like the, the Warren Buffett scenario where you're, you're just accumulating and accumulating and accumulating, but you're never really going to be happy because you have to know that you're contributing to something. You know, so people like that will usually only contribute in the areas that bring them significance. You know, you, you think about the areas that you might give to, you know, if you, if you financially give to somebody, you know, or, or something, it usually ties into some way that you feel that contribution has brought significance or has brought certainty, you know, or fulfills one of those other needs. But we have to know that, I, you know, if, if we're not contributing to something, then we, then we get very uncomfortable. You know, have you ever been in a group of people, you know, where, where you're doing some kind of, you know, whether it's a classroom or whether it's a, a group effort on a project or something like that, and you feel like you're not contributing to it? What happens in that scenario? You start feeling very uncomfortable because you know that you're not contributing in a constructive way. So, uh, what would be a, a destructive means of contribution? What, like giving everything you have away so that your family starves? Something like that. There you go. Yep. Very good. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I think of it like a like maybe like a ball hog. Like you got to. It's got to be. You. Mm-hmm. Uh, the takeover yeah. syndrome. Yeah, exactly. just, when, they, when they put their self in at that point, they sh- shove everybody else out of the way. Yeah. Well, like a yeah. But even if it's not even helping, it's making you feel better. Yeah. So. For show, essentially, for show. <clears throat> yeah. Another destructive way, giving people venereal diseases. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that would not be a contribution, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a destructive means of contribution. So, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, there's, there's all these different ways that, you know, we, we look for contribution. I mean, you know, contributing not free vaccines. That's yeah, no, there you go. Yeah, we get me started on vaccines. The, 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 the Bill Gates syndrome. Yeah, yeah I get, I'm gonna I'm gonna contribute to the world, but that's a definitely a destructive contribution. You may think you're doing something beneficial, but you're really you're really not. You know, or contributing to a uh, 15 percent decrease you know, in population. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you yeah. see that? Uh, it came out of his mouth. Did you hear? Oh yeah, I've, I've seen that. Yeah, what do you yeah. See? I saw. Yeah. It. I can't yeah. believe it. Yeah, Bill Gates, Bill Gates was saying that we need at least we need to see for sustainment of the future we need to have at least a decrease of fifteen percent of the population, oh my gosh. global population, which is absolute baloney. Yeah, they what was it? Um, Jack went through the numbers here uh, when we were going through Revelation, and he was showing the the calculations. It actually shows us it, it describes the the dimensions of the new Jerusalem, the you know the the yeah. the new Israel. The dimensions are basically like almost the entire size of the United States. I mean, it's just massive, massive, you know, uh, space that's there. And, and he said that if you took every single person in the world right now and, and gave them each, what, a, I think a two by two foot box, which would have everybody standing next to each other, you could fit every single person on the globe in Jacksonville, Florida. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just the idea that we're overpopulated is so 
ridiculous. It's phenomenal. That he, he said also, if you gave everybody something like an acre, uh, an acre of land, you could fit you could fit the entire world population in like Texas, Texas. and and what? Oklahoma or something so like is that. that. Just from like like greed, people wanted all this space. Well, they would control, and, yeah. Or, yeah. Like just the, the idea of overpopulation is that what? Or it could just be I'm, stupid misinformation too. I mean, yeah. I, who knows? I've got a little bit of a rant on that. Like I know some uh, Old Testament class at seminary. I was uh, studying. It wasn't Babylonian, but it was actually just really ancient documents. And it's this. The, even there, you see, it's like the the gods were angry because there are too many people on the earth. And you're like, are you kidding me? Back at that point in history, there's probably under a million people on the entire earth. You see it again in the Dark Ages and the Middle Ages. You see it. You see it over and over and over. This idea that oh, there's too many people, and the reality is like we're producing more food per capita than we ever have. There's not any logical reason to believe that. And I honestly believe it's demonic. I think the reason it's, yeah. it's ancient and it's in there is it goes exactly against the Bible. It said, you know, be fruitful, multiply. And I think yeah. it's, it's a demonic influence that just gets in people's well, mind. I mean, hey, the, the more people there are, the more chances there are for people to be saved. You know, the more connections that are made, which fulfills love and connection. So... Do you think yeah. it goes to like um, when they're saying the world's overpopulated that's based on like um, use of federal funding for like uh, Medicare and Medicaid? You know, you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. About how uh, those systems are used and. Well, I mean, there's definitely the more that it doesn't have to be that way, but the more that there's a world population, the bigger that is, the bigger population there is of people who are inept. You know, of people that need others' help, and and so they just look at it from the fact of, well, now there's all these roaches that we need to take care of. Exactly. When the, the reality is, I mean, they incubated Warren, Warren Buffett alone roaches. could probably take care of all of Africa, the whole continent. Mm -hmm. I mean, realistically, just his fortune alone, he probably could. I mean, Bill Gates could take Asia. <laughs> the Facebook guy could take South America. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's just there. There's there's plenty of resources. If you sit back and you think about this, when when you think about where money, and we talked about this in the finance uh, when we did the finance uh, class. If you really step back and you think about it, every single time that a barrel of oil is pulled out of the ground, a diamond, even a tree. That is now that now translates into money that is being put out into the environment. So if you if if you committed your whole life to just pulling yellow squash out of the ground, you could pull more resource out of the ground than you could ever consume yourself. You know, and if each one of us did that, you did asparagus, you did eggplant, you did corn, you did broccoli, we all did that. We would have more food, more resource than we could ever consume in our entire lifetime. Plain and simple. You know, yet we also have now the advent of all this technology that makes it to where we don't even have to work that hard and we can pull all these resources out of the ground. And so... There, you know, with everything that's been pulled out of the ground over the entire course of human history, there is so much wealth now that never has disappeared. All that wealth continues every year. More wealth is pulled out of the earth. More wealth, more wealth, more wealth. Does that make sense? I mean, it continuously is being pulled out of the ground and put in. It never disappears. It's there forever. Have you ever thought about where it is? I mean, that's, that's some scary stuff. And, you know, I mean, I'm sure a lot of it's in the Federal Reserve. You know, but it's, it's like, yeah, it's in these central banks and everything. There is there is plenty of, of resource out there. It's never disappeared. It's and there's even a lot of fake resource out there. Yeah. That's, and that's what's so cool. Invented money. That's what's so cool about the way that it talks about in, you know, that it describes heaven in the Bible that, that the streets are paved with gold. And it's like, there's so many different ways of looking at that, but it literally, the way I, I mean, one simple way of looking at it is like, that's the whole point. It's like, there's so much that God gave us that's there 
if we just had access to everything that's that's there, we would have more than enough. You know, we would have enough right now probably yeah. to pay the streets with gold. You know, it's everybody it, wants it though. Yeah, yeah, it's wild. Make one of their quick point about the because uh, people will like will point to situations where there's all this abject poverty and they'll say that oh it's an overpopulation. But really, when you look at the overpopulation people, they point to places where the people are uh, under oppressive regimes. Mm -hmm. And a good example is you look at the, the continent of, uh, of Korea. You know, North Korea, you know, abject poverty. And you could say, oh, overpopulation. But if you look at South Korea, it's all this abundance. So it's like, really, the, the main issue is, uh, is oppression and freedom. And if people are given freedom and the ability to create and you know, basically working hand in hand with God, then there's there's always more than enough. Yeah. That's where they're repressed that it looks like there's scarcity. So. One of the really cool components to that goes with Ted. Um, yeah, have you guys seen the the idea of microloans? There's there's some companies out there that uh, you know some some projects that have been started off. What they do is they they give microloans, which is literally like twelve hundred bucks to somebody out in the middle of Africa. And these people take just this small amount of money in our terms, and they start a project that now delivers fresh irrigation to an entire community. They're just given this little seed of innovation like you're, like you're talking about, and they produce enough for everybody. And you see these oppressed communities, usually that's internal to a large degree because the people feel like they have no hope and they have no, you know, so they basically just wait and wait and wait and nothing ever happens when if they really just got an innovative person, you know, if they got Jeremy Carter out there, it would be fixed. Boom. Just like that. I mean, there would be things happen. <clears throat> there would be things happening simply because one person had innovation. Even if you don't necessarily have the tools right away, you'll find a way. You know, somebody had to find a way to start with, right? You know, so it's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, so think about the, you know, again, look back at this and be thinking about the worst, you know, the, the, the times that you made the biggest mistakes in your life and what you were trying to fulfill there. You know, what, what areas of your life were you trying to, what areas were you missing on and how that plays into this? Also think about the best aspects of your life, like the most favorite points in your life, what you love about them, you know, and, and why, why that's so important. And you'll see it all ties into this stuff. And hopefully in that you'll identify maybe the areas that, that you're lacking in the most, you know, and then once you, once you identify the areas that you're lacking in, then you can start to fulfill those needs, you can find constructive ways to do it. Because if you don't identify where your needs are lacking, then you don't know and, you'll, and you're more likely, you see, to start filling them in destructive ways. So if you can identify it ahead of time, you can put the insight into it to figure out how to constructively accommodate that. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, this last thing that we're going to cover real quick is, uh, you guys have probably all seen this. This is what Mas Maslow's, Maslow's, uh, Maslow's, uh, yeah, yeah. So that thing. <laughs> okay. So at the bottom, you know, this, this is basically what you call the, the, the rat mentality. Okay. This is where, unfortunately the, the great bulk of society lives. This is where the physiological needs are being met. You, you can talk to people and you can know that they're here right away. These are generally the complainers. These are the people who are, you know, well, I just, you know, I just want, you know, if I just had money for groceries, if I just had a new car, if I, if, you know, I'm just, I've got, you know, I just need to be able to pay my rent. And, you know, they're complaining about problems all the time. And what does it always come down to? money self or so yeah yeah so they're always trying to fill something about themselves so how much contribution do these people make none, none. and the, unfortunately like i said this is the, the 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 bulk of society if you look at the whole thing there's a large number of people down here at the bottom so it's breathing it's food water sex how that one get in there sleep homeostasis <coughs> excretion 
That doesn't mean you're a nation. You know, so it's 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 all these things that that are just basically just to fulfill those basic needs and nothing else. It's it's that that accumulation. You know, we we just want to grab what what we need to survive and hold on to that. So, you know, you think about it in terms of, you know, two rats out in the gutter, you know, and one of them finds a piece of cheese and they'll literally kill each other over that piece of cheese. You know, when the reality is they'd probably both be fine with half of it, but here we are, we're fighting over the same piece of the pie. This is, this would, this would be, you know, Dr. Jason comes into town and we're, we're fighting about, you know, we're fighting over patients, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, after all, there's not 350,000 people in Mobile, right? I'm sure, I'm sure we have to fight over the same patients. I've got another chiropractor that I know that's like, that I've talked to what, once or twice since I've, since I've been here. Cause I'm within like three or four miles of his practice, you know, mm -hmm. it's like a weird sort of thing. So competition. It yeah. must be in that little. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's all about just, you just got it. You know, you, if, I, ooh, and, and the, the scary thing about this, you, it's very hard to get out of this level, very hard to get out of this level because it's selfish. And we have, I mean, we have that selfish tendency, you know, that starts as kids, right? You know, so this is a, a growth and an age thing. We move, not too many people. I mean, how many kids do you know that start off in self-actualization? One, right? <laughs> There's only one. So we don't start off in self-actualization. We start at the bottom. We've got to grow up to the top. Okay, so the next level is safety. It's security of body, of employment, of resources, of morality, of the family, of health, of property. Well, obviously, you had to find those things before you can secure them. So it's like this is where you see, this, this is like uh, the, the Joneses thing, right? You know, where you, you do all this stuff, you collect all this stuff to try and get to a certain level, but then you're scared to death that you're going to lose it and all of a sudden you're going to drop back down to the bottom again. You know, it's like, it's like playing Monopoly, you know, you, you bought up all these properties and now you're, now you're scared you're going to lose it all. You know, so people get up in this level and then we've seen a ton of this lately, right, in the, in the, the economy and everything. People have their, their certain level of living and they've gotten up to here and then, and then all of a sudden the economy collapses and their whole world goes to shambles because they're like, they're like oh my God, what's happening? You know, this was the, this is the economy line. You know I mean? It's like everybody below here, you know, because, because they're complaining about where the economy has been for the last two years. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So... The next level is love and belonging. You get over this, it's kind of like, okay, well, you know what? Who cares about the economy? Who cares about it? If, if it all goes away, it's not that big a deal. You know, yeah, at least, you know, I still have my, exactly, you said it perfectly. I still have my family. I still have my relationships. So this is where you get to the level where it's the, you, you have the accumulated things that you know can't be taken away from you. So it's like everything below this line, these are all things that can be taken from you. But once you get up to this level, it's still semi-selfish because it's the things that don't get eroded away. Okay, but it's not until you get up at this level where it's like the esteem is self-esteem, confidence, achievement, respect of others, respect by others, where it's like, you know, even this doesn't necessarily, you know, th this is less of a concern now it's like, yeah, those things are there and that's great. And you don't want to lose those things. I mean, nobody that is up here wants to see this stuff go away, right? You know, we don't want to see all of our, I mean, Job, you know, doesn't want to see his material possessions taken away and his family taken away and everything else. But, but at the same time, he was wise enough to say, you know, hey, you know, I'm, I realize where I'm at. I realize that I'm, you know, that, that. I'm subject to completely your will. And so all that stuff below there was restored to him, right? You guys all know the story. So, so this is, is about you've got enough self-respect that, that even if your, your love and relationships, your family are taken away from you, you still are fulfilled. You're still, you can have everything taken away and you're still you know, pretty much okay. But it's still not at the top. The, the top level is where all of a sudden you become selfless. 
you know, it's, it's really, it's like, these are the people like Martin Luther King, you know, who, who will literally give their life knowingly. I mean, they'll, you know, Jesus, obviously, you know, these are the people who, who will expend their lives for the people around them. It's kind of like, you know, Dr. Jason saying, you know what, you can take my license, you can do this, go ahead and shoot me because if you put me in prison, I'm going to adjust everybody in prison, <laughs> right? You know, that, that's... I would that. too. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, it's like... I was watching some prison show, this is kind of funny, you said, I was watching a prison show, and I said, you know what, I said, man, everybody in that prison would be kind to me. If I ever ended up in jail, I'd be adjusting the whole prison. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty funny. We'd have a job wherever we were. That's right. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Unless they take your hands, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, so I find a way. Yeah, the, I mean the self-actualization. That's that's where you really want to get. And this isn't some cheesy quasi, you know, thing. This is this is just getting to the point where you always consistently put other people first. That's that's where we ultimately want to strive to be. And it's very, I mean, obviously, it's very hard to get there. Because you do, for the most part, have to go through these other levels first. It's almost like a, a battle of proving it to yourself that it's like, okay, yeah, I can accumulate the stuff. Great. You know, that's not important anymore. Okay, well, you know, I can have, you know, the safety and everything. But it's like, okay, well, you know, I had it. It wasn't that big a deal. So great. I can, I can lose that. That's fine. You know, I, I have my family and everything. And it's like, I love them and everything. But if it gets taken away from me, you know... I know I'm still gonna be okay, great. You, know, you see, I mean, you have to move up through these levels and learn through experience. You know, not too many people are just gonna be able to right off the bat, they have all this stuff and then all of a sudden it's taken away and be like, oh, you know, that's okay, I'm gonna be all right. So you, you don't know? like, like say you make it all the way up and then everything, like all your physiological needs get taken away, like you, you are poor so you can't get food. You don't go back to trying to take care of that so you can go back to reading and didn't we talk about that on the call? It's okay? kind of weird when you... And she said, I mean, she was talking about you have, you have the basic needs, you have housing, food, water, you have to have those. Yeah. And then you go to, you know, other things, like, but then you make it to the top where you're trying to figure out where you are morally. And But the way she put it was, if the the base, what, what keeps you stable, is taken away, you act, you automatically regret back to that to take care of that so you can get back to where you are. Oh, Ultimately, as a Christian, making it up here, this should be provided. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of thing. It's it, most people. Most people will revert back. You know, when things. You know, and that that's uh, that really kind of describes where you really are, though. If you think about it, you know, I mean, because if if you're up here at the top, you kind of know it's all going to be taken care of right. regardless. I mean, you're, you're going to be fine because, because you're expelling yourself so much to other people around you. There's always going to be enough people around you to, to provide. There's always going to be. I mean, unless they just drop you on a random island out in the middle of nowhere and, and it's like, okay, who cares? I'm dead. Oh well. I you, know. you still would go back to working on it. Right, to try to handle it. But, yeah. but you would... Ultimately, you know that it's taken care You're of. You're on a different scale yeah. mentally. Yeah, you, yeah. you've been yeah. through it before. You know that you can do it again, and, but you're not stressing about it as much. The well, ultimate yeah. example of that is, of course, you know, Jesus walking up to the disciples and just saying simply, follow me. You know, it's like that, that, that was the two most powerful motivational words in, in the course of human history. Two words, follow me. <laughs> and they just, they're just expected to drop everything. They were down here, and they're expected to jump up to here. Boom, just like that. That's where he, he lost said the two words. That's where he lost the rich and the ruler at. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. I think an example of that is um, like the Apostle Paul. You have someone that I think you pretty much agree is self-actualized, and then he's put in prison, so he's dropped down to the red level. Like, you know, just basic needs are probably, you know, in question. But he's still like not looking for himself. He's still like ministering to the jailers. He's ministering to the. He says the whole house of Caesar has come to the Lord. Like he's still self-actualized because he's still giving of himself, even though he's been dropping that bottom level. Yeah. So, so there's a physical and there's also a mental thing. Yeah. So you, so Absolutely. you grow through this. Uh, I mean, through experience. All right. Martin Luther King wasn't it? Uh, he he said, 
literally in one of his last recordings, I think was the day before he was assassinated. The day before he was he was in, in a recording saying, you know, I don't basically I don't care if you know they can take my life. You you know you can kill me. You're not going to stop this. You know, and then the next day he shot. You know, so it's it's something like that, and it's you can see now why that literally even when when people get to that level, you can kill them and they're not stopped. That's the beauty behind it. It's like Jesus' ministry didn't die when Jesus died. It only began. You know, Martin Luther King, he never got to see what happened, but it continued on without him. You you look at almost every big thing that's happened. It's like it, you know, it it went on without him. Except for Michael Jackson, his show, his show didn't make it. You know, <laughs> what do you call that? Self actualized. So, you know, that that's the whole point, and that's that's there's not too many people in the in the course of human history, realistically, that have been there. You know, I, but but that should be where we always try to be is just give so much of yourself that you just don't you just don't think about the the needs of yourself. You know, and and really, it's just. It's just about connecting with, with other people. Just just connect and give and give all that you can and strive to be up there. You may not be there. You may not make it there for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, but strive to be there and act as if you are all the time. And if you act like that, you're gonna, you're gonna live that tendency to be up there. You know, that's why you also don't wanna hang out with people that just talk about this stuff all the time. Because they'll keep you there, you know. I mean, as as long as you're hanging around that, that's that's where you're going to stay. You're the subject of the five people that you hang around the most. So if you want to be up a level, hang out with those people. If you want to play, you know, golf like Tiger Woods, you better be hanging out with Tiger Woods. You know, you you've got to you've got to constantly be focusing on there. And like they say, if you uh, you know if you plan on landing in the tree, don't shoot for the tree, shoot for the stars. You know, because at least if you fall short, you still land in the tree. You know, but if you shoot for the tree, you're likely to land in the dirt. Okay. So uh, next week, we're just going to go through the developing the skills and just kind of go through the cleanup. And it'll be, it'll be, you know, a little bit quicker so that we can talk about, you know, anything else that needs to be summed up and questions and all that stuff. So I guess your jobs would be over the next week. Think about what we talked about in the last three weeks and come up with any questions that you have and any, any kind of cleanup information that you'd like to talk about and cover and you know and we can uh, we can have meaningful discussion on it. Cool? Cool.